Hey everyone, hope you had a fantastic weekend. I am here to talk about some of the coolest games shown at Tokyo Game Show 2024. So I really wanted to talk about some unique looking games that I kind of discovered during the Tokyo Game Show this year. Uh, of course, we're going to talk about some JRPG stuff, about uh, like Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake and stuff like that. But I really wanted to take a look and shine the light on some lesser known games, as well as some more known games that I'm just excited about that we got to see some footage of and some new details of during Tokyo Game Show this year. If you like Dragon Quest, JRPG, or video Video game content like this, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. My goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I think with your help, we can do it. Alright, so starting off with a action platformer, we've got Kid Bash Super Legend. So far, this is only going to be released on PC. I don't know that there's been a release date yet, but it looks like a mix between Mega Man and Kirby. So the story is basically kind of like the island of misfit toys. This is like the world of misfit gaming characters. So each little character in here has their own little backstory of what kind of games they're, they were from or supposed to be from and how they ended up here. And the game just looks phenomenal. You've got some Mega Man style gameplay, and then you've got like, of course, the copy ability like from Kirby. And I love the art direction. I love the quirkiness of this game. The gameplay looks amazing. It's just, I never really thought that like Mega Man and Kirby could go so well together. And even the game itself, like Kid Bash, is kind of a tribute to like kit bashing, which is like when you combine two different models to create something entirely new. And that's, that's kind of what this really is. This is like a kit bash of Kirby and Mega Man. But more importantly, it's kind of a kit bash of a bunch of different things we love. Like this really has like that 1980s, early 90s feel to it as a whole. And it's really going kind of for that old school 80s anime vibe as well. I don't know. I just love the look of this game. Uh, the gameplay just looks absolutely incredible to me. This looks right up my alley. If you love Mega Man, you love Kirby, I think you need to definitely check this game out, give these guys a follow. And yeah, I'm just, I can't wait to see more from Kid Bash Super Legend in the future. Alright, next up we're getting into some potential JRPG stuff. Uh, we got Holy Horror Mansion by Level 5. So this is like a follow-up to the Yokai Watch series, or a spiritual, pun intended, successor to the Yokai Watch series. So... It looks very similar, but it looks on a much larger scale, of course, which makes sense because the Switch is a full console that you play on your TV, and it's not just a handheld thing on the 3DS or the DS anymore. There's not really that much in terms of, like, gameplay footage here, but the vibe is fantastic. It seems like we're going to be getting another great Yokai Watch style game from level 5. It even has like that whole like possessed objects and possessed people thing from the Yokai Watch series that I loved so much. I'm really looking forward to seeing more about Holy Horror Mansion by level 5. There was no release date or anything like that or console announcement leading to speculation that this game will be coming out on the Switch 2, but since the Switch 2 officially doesn't exist yet or officially hasn't even been announced or anything like that, I can understand why they basically said that they aren't sure what console and aren't sure on a release date yet. But yeah, looking forward to this one. Looks badass. Next up, I've got some good and bad news about Fatal Fury City of the Wolves for the PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox Series, and PC. This is a game I've been looking forward to. I'm a big Fatal Fury fan, or at least I was back in the day. King of Fighters is great, but honestly, Fatal Fury is where my heart has always kind of been in the fighting series. I really love, like, the real bout special games. This new game in the series looks incredible, looks really well done, but what I really want to focus on here is the new announcement that Ken and Chun-Li from Street Fighter are going to be joining the game, which is great because my favorite fighting game of all time is Capcom vs. SNK2. That's good! But it's kind of dumb because this is DLC being announced as part of the season pass before the game is even freaking out. That's bad. And they are already talking about DLC that's coming out. Why is this DLC, man? This should be in the game. This should be promotional material for the game saying, hey, look, Ken and Chun-Li are going to be in here. I think that's kind of dumb. I know SNK is trying to come back in a very big way this year or next year, and I'm happy for them for that. I really am excited to see and get my hands on... 
Fatal Fury City of the Wolves, but stuff like this just kind of, I don't know, rubs me the wrong way, to be completely honest. Even if they did it as like a pre-order bonus, it would still kind of suck, but not as bad. But uh, yeah, I don't know. City of the Wolves, still looking forward to it, but this is kind of a bit of a bad look to me. Next up is a unique 3D platformer called Tanuki Pond Summer. So this game is like, the best way I could describe it, I guess, is like, if you took something like Animal Crossing and combined it with Jet Set Radio, if that makes any sense. So you're a little delivery Tanuki and you go throughout the countryside in Japan and it just looks like a cozy atmosphere and environment. The vibe seems excellent and the gameplay just seems like a blast. So you're riding your little bike, you're grinding on rails, you're doing a bunch of tricks and stuff while making your deliveries, meeting all the little citizens and just having a fun time. Honestly, I'm not a big 3D platformer guy, but this game really stood out to me and just looks like a fun time to play. So I wanted to give a quick mention to Tanuki Pond Summer. This game will be coming out on Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. So look forward to this one. I don't think there was a release date yet. Next up is a arcade style game that just looks awesome. So this game is called Rogue Flight. It's coming out on the PS5, Xbox Series, and the Switch later this year. There hasn't been a release date yet, but this game takes inspiration from 80s and 90s anime like Evangelion, Gundam, and Macross, and man does it show. So. It's got like these in-depth animated kind of cutscenes and like a really good story, like the lore seems excellent. But then the gameplay is like afterburner in space. Like this game just looks awesome. I'm so excited to play this game. This is gonna be one out of all the games probably that I've talked about thus far, this is the one that I'll 100% be getting. This is just, I'm a huge Afterburner fan and we haven't really got anything since Afterburner Climax back on like the PS3, which was an absolute blast to play. And this really gives off kind of Afterburner Climax vibes to be honest. But in space and with this like sprawling universe and lore and like just the story looks great, the characters look great, the cutscenes look great, and the gameplay looks phenomenal. It's just, it looks action-packed, it looks exciting, it's everything I want from like an arcade-style jet fighter kind of game. So yeah, look for this one, Rogue Flight, coming out later this year. So now I wanted to get into a little bit of the Dragon Quest 3 issue 2D remake news from Tokyo Game Show. So I don't really want to focus on everything because you could kind of see the trailer in my previous video and you can find other stuff online, but I just wanted to show kind of the new stuff that we found out. So starting with the fact that they have confirmed that recruiting new monsters is going to actually increase the abilities of the Monster Wrangler class. So they've said that getting to know more monsters helps the Monster Wrangler kind of better understand monsters and gives them new abilities and stuff like that. So it, it didn't really like go into detail, but it did say that it is going to improve upon the Monster Wrangler the more monsters you've recruited. So if you're planning on having a Monster Wrangler in your party, it's probably going to pay off to recruit all the monsters you can and battle them in the monster arena as much as possible. I know most people are going to want to do that anyways, but this just gives you an extra incentive to do so. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next one, and I'll catch you in the next one.